boss, I have all these questions about reality and from a science point of view or from uh, wondering what the meaning of uh, life is all about. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, you know, how do I know the things I know in the area of epistemology in, in philosophy? And you are very well known as an anti-realist in terms of science. So from that perspective, as an anti-realist in science, mm -hmm. how does that reflect on your sense of epistemology, what we can know about anything? Um, well, knowledge, knowledge uh, itself is a difficult concept. Um, and uh, in the sciences, they are more likely to uh, talk about what is more probable and what's less probable, yeah. right? Um, but uh, I know that the question of knowledge is an important one, and I understand uh, why you raise it that way. There's something paradoxical about knowledge. I would go with common sense and say we know much. We have a lot of knowledge, okay? Mm -hmm. But when you, the more you look at it, the less you see. Yes. Um, I, in a course once, uh, I had a student who said, philosophers are too skeptical, <laughs> right? And I said, oh, well, you know, I bet you know a lot of things. Um, tell me, do you know what you're going to do this summer? He said, yes, I'm going to Hawaii for a holiday. I said, okay. And um, James, uh, do you know that you're not going to die before June? <laughs> and he said back, and then, uh, no, I'm, uh, anything could happen. I said, well, if you, don't, if, you can, if you don't know whether you're going to die before June, then you don't know whether you're going to Hawaii. <laughs> no, but, and then I s said, look, I played the trick on you, <laughs> okay? I played the trick because the second question changes the context. You change the context and you change the, 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 the you set the bar at a different place, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So what is knowledge appears to be contextual. Yeah. And so there's no straightforward question to what is it that we know? Yeah. In some contexts, you're totally right to say, I know that. In other contexts, set the bar high, you can't say that. Right? So how, how do we apply that? Uh, there's one approach in science. Mm. Are there things that some people call you know, basic knowledge that we mm -hmm. have, the knowledge of that I, I, I think I can't change the past, or that mm -hmm. we all, you know, the knowledge of other minds. Mm -hmm. Are there things that are sort of intuitively obvious that you don't even have to have, you don't even have to have any independent demonstration of, but you can assume as, as axioms in our knowledge? I mean, how do, how do you deal with these different facets of knowledge? Well, I would say that as a philosopher of science, I'm mostly concerned with these questions in the context of a scientific inquiry. Mm -hmm. And there, my model would really be um, probability, um, the uh, opinion uh, uh, expressed in terms of probability, uh, what is more likely and what is less likely, and how to manage that uh, state of opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think we understand very well, up to a point. Um, but when you then ask, uh, what about in, you, in, you know, you step outside the context of a scientific inquiry, there's a lot you know, and I would say, fine, then let's go to the phenomenology. What is this experience of knowing? And it begins with acquaintance. Mm. Uh, I know you, I'm acquainted with you, right? That's the first level? That is the first level, absolutely. That, um, uh, you know, Kant at the very beginning of the critique says, all knowledge begins in experience. And he's famous for talking about knowledge apart from experience, above experience, before experience, mm -hmm. prior, right? But all knowledge begins in experience. Mm -hmm. Then, secondly, um, as an empiricist, I put all the weight on the experience in, that gives us our data about the observable level. Mm -hmm. There you are. Here I am. Here are, here are these, the, the pews in a, in a beautiful chapel. Mm -hmm. Uh, this we know, there's no question. And that's where the scientist too starts, right? Uh, yeah, but um, you can start going down the skepticism path. Well, how, how do I know that? I know that because there are light photons that are bouncing off this and mm. everything is absorbed but brown and the brown mm. hits my retina and then that goes through the optic nerve and the lateral geniculate body and then into the thalamus and then into the, mm. the, the, the occipital yeah. cortex and then flowing around the brain and integrate. I mean, you know, there are yeah. a lot of problems in that well, in terms of... Yeah. 
how do I know? I mean, that's, that's how I know this is brown, but, you know, yeah. how real is that? Well, you know, if I listen, listen to your reasoning, I, I think that it begins to throw doubt on uh, the idea that I know this brown piece of wood. Yes. But how does it throw doubt on the reference of this word, brown piece of wood, when you were relying on the reference to, in words like photon? Yes. Uh, yeah. Which surely is more problematic. <laughs> yes, yes. How could yes. you do that? Yeah, how yeah. could you throw doubt on my knowledge of this pew by uh, using terms whose are, reference is much more problematic. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's a good question, but I, I'm not sure that helps me get to more confidence in the brown. It makes me, you know, even more s swirling around. I mean, oh, but you see now, uh, I've just shown there was a problem with your argument, right? So you yeah, that I was up. relying on something more problematic right. to, uh, to explain what seems to be uh, certainly more observable. Right. Okay, right. um, it, it, it's a problem in the argument. I'm not sure that it gives me any more confidence. Well, because there's uh -huh. a causative uh, a trail here. Mm -hmm. So that, so do you mean that now? This, you, this might have been. This might have been. I might have had confidence. Yeah. Maybe that might have been illusion. It's a false yes. confidence. Right, but now does that give you less confidence in this talk about photons that you engaged in? No, no. Oh, that's interesting. Right. How is it possible for you to have, you know, more confidence that you know about photons and that you know about? This thing here. Well, it becomes circular. It becomes circular because I, I know intellectually mm. that science has told me that I'm not, that this is not just a, ho a homogenous piece of brown wood that is brown in itself. Absolutely. The brown is something that I am I inferring into this. And so, is that, I agree yeah. that I'm doing it because I, I, I'm, I have to know what a photon is and how it yeah. works, but it seems to now yeah. suddenly be circular. Well, you know, I'll, Can I'll I have break to, out of the circularity? I'll, I'll have to say it from my empiricist point of view. Yes. What you've just described is a model that yes. scientific psychology and neurophysiology gives us. Correct. Okay. But what is the empiricist take on models? Yeah. That importance is that the real phenomena that we know directly fit in those models. Okay. Okay. I mean, now, you've done work in quantum mechanics. Yes. Uh, very serious work. Now, philosophy of quantum mechanics. And philosophy of quantum mechanics. Yes. And so, quantum mechanics adds another level, a very mm. significant level mm. of uncertainty and probability mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and weirdness. Mm. Uh, so, does that move us more or, or, skeptical or less skeptical? <laughs> Um, I don't think it makes us, no, I don't think it makes us more skeptical because actually what, uh, what I value in, in quantum mechanics is uh, how it actually uh, loosened up a lot of concepts that kept classical ways of thinking very constrained. Um, you know, uh, there's this uh, one scientist uh, today that I really admire is Carlo Rovelli. Oh, right? Yeah. And uh, when he uh, writes and talks about uh, these things, uh, it is clear that he really lives in yeah, what he is describing, yeah. right? But at the same time, you can see how uh, what he values is the kind of uh, freedom that came with being able to say, oh, we are not going to be constrained by these concepts mm, that, we were, mm, that we were taught. Mm, mm, um, mm. And this is what I really admire in, in the avant-garde scientists. You know, they, they act and feel more like artists mm. than, than like bookkeepers. 